Divine Queens. Um, so this is um, the Divine Feminine page, and today we are talking about um, a kingdom mar kingdom marriages, right? In regards to the women role in the church or in the in in Israel, right? Sorry, <laughs> in regards to Israel, the woman's place because I know there's a conversation in regards to um, women, right? And how they are to play their role out in society in regards to Israel and um, a holy nation. So God has been speaking to me this week in regards to us becoming holy in our existence, right? Holy as a people. And for holiness to exist, wholeness has to exist, right? So in regards to our relationships between the men and the women, we have to come into kingdom marriages. However, there is an understanding that we must come to um, to dwell in kingdom marriages, right? And then there's a responsibility of the women at this time in regards to executing the will of God um, through our spiritual existence. Okay, so, um, so we're talking about the divine feminine and how it honors the div divine masculine. We spoke about the Proverbs 31 woman. So I encourage you guys to go back and review those videos in regards to the Proverbs 31 woman because it speaks to the virtue of a woman and how that virtue aids in the family dynamics and the um, kingship of our men. So because today we are talking about kingdom marriages, right? So um, there is a unity, there is a need for the woman to um, exist in her full feminine energy, for the man to um, bask in his masculine energy. However, there needs to be an understanding of the man as the head for it to be effective and um, for them to come together and be fruitful and to multiply. So um, we're talking about the responsibility of the woman, right? So in about three different um, subject matters. We're gonna tackle the role of the woman, the world's perception of a woman, and the man's need for a woman and the way he should honor her, okay? Because a man should love um, his wife as Christ loved the church because her divinity, her purity, her um, existence is a help meet for him and a spiritual help meet because when we were first formed, when we first were created, we were spirits, right? The flesh and the uh, body part of us came after um, the fact, after the um, turning away from the will of God. So to return back to our rightful place in the Garden of Eden in somewhat of a mindset and existence, we have to um, understand that we have to hold our men accountable to um, the way they're supposed to be because when we do that then um, we are Executing our divinity in the will of God Okay, so because it is imperative um, That to come into our divine feminine in its full power of influence our men must be held accountable for their role under Christ Okay, so there are some things we have to expect from them um, things like having Christ as their head and the expression of the character of Christ and the expression of their authentic self. Um, you will observe these things in um, their moral fortitude and foundation in which they will express in the things they say and the things they do. So um, A, their moral fortitude and foundation. B, their relationships with their loved ones. And C, their relationship with God, themselves, and you. So in the scriptures that we're going to be exploring today, we'll talk about how to recognize that so that we can have a standard in which our men must meet to have us as their wives. So as as your um, as your as their wife, they must love you as Christ loved the church. So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 11 and 3 first, okay? But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So that is in um, 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. 
but we have to understand that um for a man to properly lead a woman he has to be led by christ and over um time in society and in history women have been oppressed because men have been unable to love women properly right like christ loved the church so now going forward into the royalty of our existence we have to hold our men to a standard of loving us properly right because when a um man loves a woman properly he can be a provider and protector authentically so um let's go to first corinthians 11 7 through 10 um, for a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. So the woman is the glory of a man. So a woman must, um, should project the love of her husband, right? The honor of her husband, the glory of their union in her day-to-day -day life, in the way she is provided for, in the way she is able to, to express herself and her gifts because a man has to choose a woman that's in alignment with his purpose, right? So that she can dwell in her own purpose so they can come together and be equally yoked in the kingdom of God in regards to their expression of their um, spiritual knowledge or a purpose or whatever they're doing in the servitude of God, in the spirit of Christ. Um, it needs to be honored. They both need to be on one accord. That's what equally yoked mean. Equally yoked in spirit and in purpose. So, um, uh, and it says, so for a man indeed ought not to cover his head because he knows that he has Christ as his head, okay? And um, that's why a man takes off his hat when he is in, um, in dining or in situations. And a woman... For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man, right? So, um, a lot of what's going on in society is men are viewing themselves as the prize, right? But understand that the women were created for men, so we are the prize. And the men is the, um, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing, right? So, in preparation for our wifely duties and our um, virtuous um, existence, we have to prepare ourselves in purity for our husbands, right? But we have to also expect our husbands to be pure in spirit as Christ was so that he can love us properly. Okay, so for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels, right? So that covering that comes with a woman, I mean with a man, covering a woman gives her power and um, gives her the... And then we talked about in um, the book of Ruth in regards to Boaz. And Boaz told Ruth that um, I will go and try to get this land for you. But um, there, there is a nearer kinsman than I if I'm unable to do it. So that speaks to our understanding of our relationship with God and ourselves and, and where we are and knowing that we are a gift to our men in our virtue, in our purity, and that our provision is where um, our Boaz is, right? So we have to understand, we have to hold our men accountable for providing for us because in our purity, we are gifts. We are spiritual gifts, okay? So um, for this... So that is the, the, the reason why a woman should have her, her head covered. Um, oh, let's go to that. So we're going to 1 Timothy 2, 11 through 14. And we have to understand that the um, scripture is both physical and spiritual, right? So our understanding has to be both physical and spiritual. But we cannot discount the physical um, part of it because the physical instruction manifests in um, our protection in regard to the spiritual realm. Okay, so um, let's go to 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 13. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, right? So um, you don't, as a woman, you don't want to bring too much attention to yourself in regards to um, your beauty because your beauty is supposed to shine through your spirit. 
So if you array yourself too much, then you are um, putting too much emphasis on your physical existence. Now, in regards to fashion, um, people do need to understand that a woman um, expresses herself in fashion and it's kind of a signature look or, or you know, the way she feels feminine and in her feminine, divine feminine power, her, the expression is in fashion, right? Sometimes. And in the spirit realm, we are to be as beautiful as we are on the outside. Okay, so that is the understanding of that. But which becometh women professing godliness with good works, right? So instead of being, um, you know, all dressed up and, and like holy looking, we have to be charitable in our existence, kind and loving and, um, and full of good works in regards to uh, our family and society and our gifts and our purpose and our existence and what we um, desire in our hearts for humanity. Okay, so um, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So um, subjection is a way to view things spiritually, right? To view things not in a, um, everybody say that everything is subjective, but it's not. Um, subjective is when you're able to look at a certain thing from multiple angles, right, to gain understanding, and that is the gift of a woman. So when we are learning things, we are to uh, attain knowledge in regards to every facet of life and not look at things one way because a man is objective in his logical mind. And to aid him in his spiritual life, we are to look at things from multiple different ways. And then when we communicate those um, insights to our husband, then that gives them um, insight, spiritual insight to execute in um, their role as men because a, a lot of men are feeling like they are not being heard or respected or, or treated properly. And we have to understand that a man's ego must be um, nourished and protected by his woman. And if we are tearing our men down, they are unable to rise to the occasion of their kingship, right? And we need that leadership because it is not meant for a woman to rule just like it's not meant for a man to live alone it's 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 um we are we are nurturers at heart right we are to express um our beauty in so many different ways but we are to be protected we are to be covered which scripture talks about how a man is um covers the wife and 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 the christ is the head of a man so this is the natural order of things so this is the natural order in much in which me we must return to collectively so let the woman learn in silence with all subjection but i suffer not a woman to teach nor to um assert authority over the man but to be in silence so we also have to understand that our feminine energy um carries us um and and kind of introduces us before we introduce ourselves right so in our silence, we are able to exude that energy that a, a man needs to balance out his masculine energy. So we don't always have to talk or, or be vocal about everything, but we are to be quiet and silent and pay attention and speak. That's why Proverbs 31, um, on her tongue is the word, the um, of, is wisdom, right? Because wisdom comes from observing things subjectively and, and having a pure heart and and the ability to understand and nurture properly. So, um, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to assert authority over the man, but to be in silence. So a woman, we do not have, so in a royal priesthood, we're not supposed to teach, right? Or we don't have to teach like this, maybe to the children and to our men. But um, a lot of men are, is having a problem with women teaching. But what the men have to realize is they're not doing anything right so um in that regards we have to hold our men accountable to the covenant of their forefathers to become a royal priesthood and we have to understand for them to do that they have to have christ as their head and we have to be a virtue to them a help me of purity and peace and and you know submission but we cannot submit to a man who has not submitted to christ so this is the understanding that we must have, that we must give them and to hold them accountable, that they cannot have access to us or the intimacy with us or the marriage of us if they are not 
um, abiding by this understanding. For Adam was formed, then Eve, right? So in that understanding, a man must come into his Christ conscious before a woman can take her proper position in the kingdom and or the king's of marriage. Okay, I love you guys. Stay extremely blessed and extremely divine and know that you are powerful in your existence, in your feminine existence, and you do not have to um, take on um, masculine attributes to assert yourself. Blessings. In Jesus' name, amen.